Hello, my name's Ollie. Welcome to Void Space, and today we're going to be speed painting some Blood Angels. Okay, so speed painting Blood Angels, that's what you've clicked on this for, I presume, because the title should be pretty self evident. I'm going to show you today how we go from this to this in a matter of minutes, not including the drying time. But if you're speed painting and bulk painting these guys in the you know, squads of 10 or more even. Um, I'm going to show you a really quick and effective paint scheme to get these guys battle ready and on the tabletop. Full disclosure, this is not going to win you any painting awards, but it is going to give you that really cool on the table Blood Angel look and feel for your army. So without any further ado, let's crack on. Okay, so first thing that we're going to do, or the first thing that we've already done actually in these sub 15 minute Blood Angels, is we've primed the entire model in Army Painter Pure Red. Now, I've gone over with a little bit of a thinned down Army Painter Pure Red straight from the bottle, and what that's gonna allow us to do is just cover up all those areas which are a little bit hard to reach, um, specifically between the bolter and the body, around sort of the, the crevices in the helmet, uh, between the backpack and the body there, and it's just given us a solid red to work up from. The next step is to grab your Reichlin Flesh Shade, which is quite a soft wash, a yellowy wash. And what we're going to do is we're going to cover the entire model in this shade, um, paying particular attention to all the areas that are going to be red. Um, we are bulk painting these in sort of like 10, 15s, so that we can get an entire army on the table. We're just going to slather it all on, and anywhere that you get any excessive pooling, just dry your brush off on a bit of paper towel and just move that away from the surface. So we'll give this guy a total wash, a full all over wash, and we will come back to him once he is done. And once you've done about 10 or so of these, by the time you've done the 10th one and you've left them in a warm place to dry, like by a heater or a radiator, you will end up with a model that has a lot of detailed recess shading ready for the start of the base coats. Now it looks like I've got a lot of colours back here, and I do, but they are very easy steps and we're going to blast through these in absolute record time to get some Blood Angels on the table of this kind of tabletop quality. And we're just going to go around and we're going to pick out all of the armour joints. So once that's done, we'll come back and see what he looks like. And once we've based in our Under Armour in the Vallejo model colour dark grey, we're left with something that looks a bit like this. You will inevitably overspill in some areas, so on the arm there and by the legs. Just go in, touch it up again with some pure red, and you will be at a stage where you have a pure red model that's had a wash, and has the Under Armour completed, which means it's ready for our next step. Now the next step is another paint, but it is a very quick step, and that is Army Painter Matte Black. I like Army Painter Matte Black because it covers incredibly well in one coat, so we're going to get some of that on our palette, and we are going to base the bolt gun casing. Let's just Get a little bit of water on our brush, not too much. Again, we're just going for the consistency of paint where we can put on one thin coat that's thin enough to cover in one coat, so we don't have to go back and do a lot of touch-ups. So we've got the black on our brush, probably get a better point than that. And we're just going to block in all of the bolt gun casing. Now, don't worry too much here. You see where I've got on the magazine there? We'll be covering that anyway. So. Don't worry too much about that, but do try and be neat around the hands to minimise the amount of cleanup that you're going to need to do. So we're going to do that, come back and have a look at him and see what he looks like. And once the matte black is on and dry, we have a fully boxed in bolter casing. Uh, one thing I will say is I noticed there was a couple of grenades on his belt here. So I've just gone in and blocked those in with the Vallejo dark grey again. Now normally like frag grenades and crack grenades specifically I think would be red, but we've done those in the same colour as the Under Armour just to give them a bit of definition because a red grenade on a red model isn't going to stand out. We have the paint on the palette anyway, it took two seconds. On to the silver now, so we're going to block in all of the silver areas, which on this model is pretty much just the 
inner bolter, the inner casing, so the magazine and the back end and the muzzle here. So we've got some, we're going to use Army Painter's gun metal for this and then wash it down later naturally, of course, but any silver will do really. As long as it's uniform, it should all be tied together in the wash stage. But we are going to block in all of the silver areas now being very careful because metallics can be a bit tricky to tidy up. So I'm just going to go into there and take your time with this step. It's not, it's not worth rushing really this particular step. And I know we're talking about speed painting, but because metallics are very easy to a make mistakes with and B cover up uh, difficult to cover up. That is just take your time with this bit. Top tip on any of your other models, like the, let me grab one, like this captain here, any items that you want to do gold, like I've done there, the commander's helmet's in gold, and he's got this little icon on his backpack here. Just base coat those in silver as well. When you put the gold on, it will just look a lot richer, which is why we have the weapon bronze there, which is the gold of choice for me. But let's just block in all of this silver, come back and have a look at what he looks like when he's done. Now, once you've blocked in all of your silver work, he will be looking like this. Now, there is an extra step for the silver and you're gonna need yourself a dry brush, but a, you know, like a medium sized makeup brush will do the trick as well. Just while you've got the silver fresh on your palette, just give it a quick dab. Brush off most of the paint onto some kitchen towel or tissue paper. Give it a bit of a test on the rim just to see how much you're gonna leave behind. And you can see this is definitely one of those occasions where less is more because you can always build it up. But what we're gonna do is just around the bolter and some other key areas like the backpack is we're just gonna give it a very light dry brush along the raised edges just to add some definition to the black areas because the black even with quite a, an aggressive washing tactic, is not going to hold a lot of definition in the wash stage. So we're just going to accentuate that black, and you can see there already, just by dry brushing the edges up silver. If you overbrush anywhere, like I have on this uh, hand here, just wait for it to dry completely, go back over it with your pure red. But I'm just going to do the bolter casing and the raised sections on the backpack. And once that's done, we're ready to move on to the next stage. We are left with just the pouches to do, which is going to be this pistol holster here. And there's another pouch on the side of this chap here, but any of the belt pouches will do. Now, if you go off of the codex art or the box art, these are all done in black. But as we know, blacks don't take a wash very well. So what we're going to do is we're going to put them in uh, Vallejo model color camouflage, sorry, German camouflage medium brown. And we're just going to very carefully, again, because we're quite close to the end, just box in these pouches here and this pistol holster. And remembering that there's a strap just running across here as well. So we're going to touch in those items now, come back and see what he looks like. So here is our model with all of the base coats done. He is good to go. So there's one or two final steps to get him fully painted. And that is to give him a wash on the bits that we've painted and to add a base. So what we're going to do is grab our Agrax Earthshade, give it a good shake, pop it open, and using a smaller brush than our shade brush, so stick to your base layer brush for this, we're just gonna put the wash on all of the areas we have painted so far. So across here, and all over the model where we have painted it, we're gonna let that dry pop a base on and then see what he looks like. And there we have it, one fully based with the base painted black as well, a bit of Sterland mud with a dry brush of elven flesh. And we've just dropped some, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but some hex ray flame into the eye sockets there, which is a green contrast paint. And we have one tabletop ready Blood Angel. Now, obviously this is not gonna win you any painting awards, but let's have a quick look at how many of these we can bash out in an afternoon. And here we have one afternoon's worth of Blood Angel painting. Now, again, it's a very simple painting scheme, this. 
it relies heavily on doing most of the work with that pure red primer but we've managed to go for a um, captain uh, with a lieutenant we've got three aggressors we've got 10 hell blasters which we can see one here you can see the aquila there just stands out a little bit better than if it was in black the same as the the weapon casing there we've got 10 assault intercessors 10 normal intercessors and we've just made a start today on these guys the infiltrators so you can get a reasonable amount of stuff painted very quickly uh, in just an afternoon this is an afternoon's worth of stuff now a couple of things that i will point out is the decals tell a huge story so we've got the blood angels decals on here i've also blocked in the shoulder pads in that dark gray that vallejo dark gray so that um, you can pick the sergeants out a little easier. We've colored in one of the knee pads as well, which we'll go back and do, and the helmet color for the battlefield roll as well. Now, if you want to do the helmet colors to the battlefield roll, I know not everybody does that, but I would recommend give it a base of a light gray. I've been using fog gray. And then for the hell blasters, I've been using the contrast Talisar blue. For the assault intercessors, I've just been using the Yeriel yellow and the intercessors just have red helmets, so there's no additional work there. So if you've got this far in the video, I just wanna say thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it useful. Check the links in the description below if you'd like to support us further. I think the best thing that you could do for our channel at this stage is just like, subscribe, comment, to share, all that kind of stuff. But if you do wanna support us further, there are links below. So thank you for watching. Goodbye for now.